everybody, welcome to the uh, Stanley Parable. Uh, and this is a game that's uh, not very much a shooter. It's kind of like a, a, an adventure game. That's that's the best I can describe. I don't really know what I'm in for, but I know what the previous game was about. So hopefully uh, I'll have an idea of what I'm doing. I'm going into this completely blind, which is, you know, this is not the kind of game I think that uh, really matters if you're doing it blind. Uh, I think the blind experience might be the best because I looked into it. Uh, and so this is it. Actually, the, the kind of funny part is uh, in the t top right corner, you can actually, uh, top left, sorry, corner, you can see my recording thing, which is a DX Tori. And uh, they actually have it like copying my screen over here. And normally you wouldn't see this, only I see the, the recording thing, but I, I thought that was kind of, that you can see it in the other screen. Uh, well, one of the kind of funny things is you can have saves enabled or disabled. So I'm guessing it's a very short game. I, I'm probably gonna do multiple playthroughs. Uh, and see what kind of uh, endings I can get. Uh, I, I know it's renowned for having like multiple endings and, and things like that. Uh, I like this. I like this thing though. Achievement. You just get an achievement if you just keep toggling it. You get like a ton of them. <laughs> I don't think they really do anything because normally, uh, normally the achievements hide for me uh, or on DX Tour, but these ones actually show up. So it's some wonky to scan. So let's uh, begin the game. Hopefully those achievements will go away. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. What? No, I'm just gonna stare at the screen. Also, I, I envy this Stan Stanley guy. He's got like the same job I do. Just pushing buttons on a keyboard with one finger at a time. So, as far as I can tell, this is a game about making Choices and the narrator basically narrates your choices, and it's got a witty sense of humor, as far as I know. I played the demo, and the demo was kind of nice. So, all right, fine, we'll step out of our office. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. The funny thing is, this is where the elevator was in the demo, and he just kind of came out, and then the, the demo kind of ended. So, it's interesting how it's changed. Oh, well, we're apparently supposed to go to the meeting room, so, you know what, I, I think I'll follow exactly what it says. It looks like all these doors are locked, though. I hate Mondays. And I can't read that. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I guess I'll follow the instructions. Huh. Just a lot of empty offices. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> Let it ball up inside you to solve a dispute with a coworker. That's great. Using slides to share in place. <laughs> Uh, sure, boys, everything is okay. That's great. <clears throat> I 
<laughs> I like these slides. <laughs> there are slides on this slide. <laughs> charts, charts and slides and slides. I like that. Rate at which the <laughs> charts on the same slide to pick the same information. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> boss, <laughs> the boss appreciation minute. Uh... That's good shit. Solving interpersonal conflict. How many slides are there? What are your dreams in the future? Metamorphosis. <laughs> Mitosis. Oh, man. Fair skin. Okay, that's it for that. <clears throat> so there's, um... To do synergize... Uh... Core value expenditures, monetize free to play, shift global market, parade? What? I don't know. We can see that the quarterly pie chart profits. <laughs> they even have they even have boxes for it. It's great shit. I just want to look at what this is. So this, this is like targets. Get Chris out of the broom closet. Poor Chris. Hire hire somebody to fire the paper synergizing guy. <laughs> Uh, this is, this is fucking gold. I love this shit. Uh, this is our meeting room. Financial panic meeting. Do not alter without consulting whiteboard manager. And, uh, bi quarterly post review review. <laughs> Space between the tea dangers. That's good shit. What do people want? Money. More money things, but with money to buy more things. <laughs> profits, profits, profits. Alright. I think we've... Oh, well, actually, we, we, need, we should see what's on the desk. Looks like just charts. Okay, I can't jump in this game, by the way. I can just, uh, my left click just uses stuff. Oh, there's also a photocopier. Okay, we'll continue. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. <clears throat> Whenever I uh, click it, it makes a typing noise. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Hear the why won't Mike get out of the closet, come out of the closet jokes. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> Fuck all. <laughs> are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. I will not. Start. There really isn't anything to do. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Maybe to you, this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. <laughs> I like his British chav voice. The best. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here, 
when a physical melody of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. All right, <coughs> I have a feeling that's now it's done. Ah, second player, it's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. <laughs> Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. We'll follow what it says. Huh. I want the pillow. Eh. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. <laughs> well, uh, do I just use the code? <laughs> I guess so. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. <laughs> Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly <laughs> know that the combination was 2845. So I guess I'll just put it in. Whoops. 2845. <laughs> <laughs> Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. I like how he got like, kind of frustrated with me. At the fact I uh, didn't, uh, was it pressing the right one? Oh, this actually has levels. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. We're listening to it now. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? It's like Professor Xavier's uh, mind control thing. Sweet. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Cool. 
This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. It's offline right now, anyways. <clears throat> oh, I guess that's why he has uh, the ability to do whatever he wants right now. Eh, turn it off. rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him, for it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Hey, achievement unlocked, beat the game. <clears throat> Isn't that fabulous? Oh, well, that was a short game. 20 minute LP, huh? We're back at the beginning. So, yeah, so now we do it all over again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to listen to what he says. I'm going to do exactly the opposite. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So you got to see what it's like if you do it, and now you get to see when you don't. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. <laughs> oh, everything's still... I have quite ah, Yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. I can't read any of these papers, by the way. I think it's just gibberish. And I want some coffee. Yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Mm, paintings. <laughs> 
At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. <laughs> Wish I could pick up cups. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue, but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. <laughs> it knows me. <laughs> Okay, I guess there's some, I guess that was the message. <laughs> but at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. Oh. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. <laughs> Did I jump? Uh, while the cargo, it will cause death. Penalty for misuse of the cargo lift. Oh. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we... But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, and you start again. Alright, I'll just fast forward back there.